For example, if you have a child, and and that that child and coming to my club, and child wants if child wants to come to my club, play the underwater rugby, he can do that. Not your pressure or not my pressure. Yeah, this is so important. Yes, yes. And this is this is the law, and I'm just using this. That's law. Yeah, you okay. know, I'm because scared. you are father. Yeah. When you say this something to him. He is thinking, mm, uh, my father, father said me, like yes, this, yes, I don't yes. want to do like this. But if he wants to play with me, yes, he should do what I said to him. Yes, yes, yes. That's, that's the deal. That's the yes. deal. Yeah. Yes. I'm using this. Therefore, actually, I'm preparing, and this is not surprise, you know. Hmm. This is not surprise. I want to show the one picture about the European Junior Championship. And this is not surprise, the winning. Because we uh, totally see that <laughs> we begin to play, we begin to preparing ourselves a few years ago. I will show up to you. The, the the different thing I see in what you explain here in in the Germany, we have uh, kids coming to us and they uh, underwater work is a plus for you. It's the start. Yeah. Yes, you know this pictures from uh, three years before. Three years before, and all national team players is here. All your national team under, players under 21. Okay, can I hold this in the camera? Yeah, here. Yeah, hi guys. <laughs> Very good. So this is this is amazing. Within three years. Yeah. Wow. Um, and the, the the thing is, and everything you explain, and your system really starts in the beginning with a family, with uh, having players that are de dedicated their life to underwater rugby and structure yes. their life around underwater yeah. rugby. If you want to be successful, you have to plan everything. Exactly, and uh, you, <laughs> you have to write, you have to plan. Yeah, and you have to be you smart. Yes, you you saw also my computer. Yeah. I'm living with my computer. I'm writing everything. I'm planning everything. Everything is on the my exit life. Exit okay. life. Wow, this is just amazing, and uh, I'm I'm really impressed with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, I always <laughs> like to t like to talk to you because the the way uh, it, the fresh uh, thinking is coming from your direction is impressive. Sorry, Björk. Yes. As you can see, and as we discuss, this personal initiative uh, yes. to doing something. Yes. And offer something what uh, other cannot offer. So that is. Uh, yeah. Always, no? in Germany, it's a totally different attitude that people want to control something. They want to do their own rules. They want to yeah. be the boss of something. But uh, I think uh, when you see the successful upcoming uh, underwater rugby nations, like Colombia, like uh, in, in Scandinavia and before, they want to do something for their people. Yes. They want to have yes. fun, and that is, I think, it's, it's a good it's example. And uh, when I took over the national team in Germany. For the woman, I had the same thing. I have the attitude to bring something new. Yes. And I have a lot of uh, people who argue with me, why you do do this in a different way? I yeah. said, because I want to change something. I want to do now. Uh -huh. And you see that the games who play, uh, the, the, the games here and the, the, the mentality, uh, everyone who use something different are successful. Yes. Yeah. And that thing, that's the start. What, what you're telling is the structuring um, we have uh, the hashtag uh, uh, underwater rugby family, but you're not a hashtag. You're the real life. Yeah. You're doing it in real life, and your uh, uh, your base is not to have players who have a different life, but you structure it around underwater rugby and make it the center of this whole community of underwater rugby. Definitely, you help yeah. each other, yeah, and it's not uh, life and underwater rugby. It's life with underwater yeah. rugby. I'm My purpose, if I have the, our own pool. You begin to scare from me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, this, this Mark, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of you already. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, I'm you, not dangerous right now. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the mic club, can you imagine every month I'm keeping the 5,000 euro? What can I do? <laughs> okay, thank you for conversation. Thank you very I have much, to go. Tarkan. It was a yeah, really big and insight. And also, we passed the game, but the Wales is win. Yes, uh, yeah. congratulations yeah. to Australia and uh, thank you very much Talcan yeah, for the insight. Bye. Herkes selam millet buradan. Bye bye. <laughs> thank you much. See you soon. Bye bye. Okay, uh, this was an impressive uh, insight uh, here in the uh, uh, 
the working of uh, Tarkan and uh, the way he organizes his club. Uh, we will talk about that later. Sorry uh, that we uh, uh, left the game of Australia against Zurich. Uh, Australia did win 1-0 and we're now here back in the game. Uh, Champions Cup 2016, uh, Copenhagen uh, from Denmark against Nassau from Finland and it's a 0-0 and it's uh, three minutes uh, in the left in the first half. Uh, I'm, 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 uh, I have a lot to think about um, uh, um, what uh, Tarkan told me and uh, talked about. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed and uh, this will be uh, um, yeah, the, the, the start for me probably uh, working closer uh, uh, in this direction to understand and analyze uh, how new countries structure uh, their sports and uh, doing their uh, underwater rugby work. Super impressed. Thank you, Takam, very much. And uh, thanks also to Levant uh, Kavas, Levant Kavas uh, in Turkey. Great work you're doing there. So let's go into this game, Copenhagen against Nasud. And uh, if uh, Lorena is up to it, I would give uh, the game to her and uh, please excuse me for a second thank you so yes i was gone that was very interesting uh, having targan here as i think you know a lot of people of the audience wanted to have uh, some comments uh, on uh, what's going on in the underwater rugby world in turkey now we are concentrating in copenhagen uh, in the game between copenhagen and nasu that was uh, walking around the hall and took some pictures and i'm uploading them in facebook um Let's see as a cluster. Uh, Nasut is playing uh, in white. These uh, girls are playing uh, for the fourth uh, to the sixth uh, place. Uh, this is a group between Copenhagen, Nasut, and Barcelona. So uh, yesterday Barcelona played against Nasut and they lost 1-0. Let's see uh, how it goes between Copenhagen and uh, and them. Yeah, and I wanted to gra congratulate to um, Australia. The Australia that they did uh, uh, that such a great job. I was right there, uh, right before the end of the of the game, and. Um, uh, Ricardo was giving a, a pep call, uh, talk, and even me got bump, uh, goosebumps. What goosebumps. You goosebumps. In, I'm not Australia. I'm not playing. So okay. So uh, uh, <laughs> our job. mission statement for this uh, Champions Cup was to be stayer in the uh, uh, games and command the games, not strive away and be focused. So sorry, uh, I don't sorry because it was very interesting to talk with Hagen. Now, now we go back into the game here, Copenhagen against Nasud, and uh, Nasud from Finland is in white, Copenhagen from Denmark in blue, and it's uh, zero zero, and Nasud is going on a fast break uh, in direction of uh, the. Uh, Copenhagen basket but uh, the ball carriers all alone and she had no uh, station to play to um, I don't see what happened why the call uh, for the referee was taken but uh, it looks like an uh, uh, out of the field ball uh, from the Nassau player we have four minutes uh, 20 left in Not this the first, first half, half. Um, so uh, we're talking about uh, placing uh, three to four uh, four to five. Four to six. Four to six. Between that uh, uh, triangular between Copenhagen, Nassau, and Barcelona. All right. So uh, I haven't seen uh, much of the game uh, yet. Now here is oh, oh great score Nassut. from Copenhagen. Uh, yeah, Copenhagen. Sorry, Copenhagen uh, uh, made a very nice uh, move here. The attacker was uh, next in the middle of the basket, next to the basket and pushing the goalkeeper away and uh, with a with one uh, push of her hand she uh, uh, very decisively hold, did hold the ball inside the basket looking around did you see what I just did now uh, one zero three minutes 30 left in this uh, first half here of uh, Copenhagen against Nasud and a call from the referee probably ball outside um, congratulations to uh, Australia and uh, it's uh they achieved so much more than they thought they were they were going to achieve so they're yes, so yes. so happy um, I'm, I'm a little bit sad for switzerland like uh, for all the uh, uh, teams who lose in the game um, switzerland had uh, big hopes for this uh, uh, 
uh, Champions Cup. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, they did quite well. It was a very good underwater rugby game, and uh, probably it gives them push for uh, for next uh, yeah, Champions Cup. And they participate a lot in the world of underwater rugby in Switzerland and the Kraken Liga. Uh, it's a very important invention. We're looking forward to, uh, probably to play there myself sometime. So let's see. Okay. Well, that means that Australia is in the ninth place of the cup. I mean, not so bad from not. 14. 14 teams. And not they so bad. Free throw time. against uh, Nasut. And Copenhagen is leading with one goal. Two minutes 20 left in this first uh, round. 15 minutes. Um, Nasut against Copenhagen. The sun is uh, gone already. We have a, a clouded, foggy uh, sky. Nice. Um, that doesn't matter to Copenhagen. And they know how to score without sun. Uh, probably they're used to it. Both teams are used to have a dark winter. So uh, Now they are on the corner, on the close corner. Uh, from Nasut and uh, they just uh, got the ball and are swimming a counter-attack and uh, they're in the middle field and Copenhagen is trying to stop that however I mean the Finnish girls uh, stay in possession of the ball and are now one meter away from the defender there's two against three of Copenhagen defending they're trying to attack the head of the goalie but the defender of Copenhagen just recovered the ball and is trying to swim away. Uh, one of the girls of Nasud is um, stopping her but she got lo uh, loose and now they're in the surface fighting for the ball. I mean these two blue against two white um, such a waste of energy. Um, now they are uh, fighting in the middle and of course for Copenhagen this kills some time and uh, exhaust uh, the opponents uh, as well as themselves but they have one goal so uh, right now they're benefiting from this stop of the game now they are attacking again uh, towards the Finnish basket but the Finnish girls are doing a great for checking um, the Danish girls are still in possession of the ball and she's are coming uh, to attack uh, but the defender does a, a good job um, this one of uh, waiting for the ball uh, the Finnish uh, player got the ball and trying to pass it to their playmates, but um, Copenhagen was uh, had uh, succeed and and keeping the possession of the ball. There's a bit of a chaos right now there, uh, but uh, the Finnish girls get into position and now they are swimming a counter attack. They recover the ball along the walls in the surface. That ball fall, but there was uh, underwater. Ow, that was a very wrong. Has one of the Copenhagen girls just intercepted has and now they it's Copenhagen swimming and uh, that's end the, the end of half. the first half so um, yes this is Champions Cup 2016 we have uh, 177 people uh, watching the live stream and if you uh, were with me uh, when the game uh, Austria and uh, Australia against uh, uh, Switzerland was happening. I was doing an interview with Tarkan, who was uh, coming into the uh, uh, commentary box. I'm sorry again for not uh, commenting on the game. It is uh, one of our, like I said, mission statements to stay in the games and to give you uh, um, eye to speech uh, uh, impressions of the game. But uh, to know what is happening in uh, Turkey with underwater rugby, I think is very important. We don't have this much information. Uh, we know uh, there are the workshops, the training camps, uh, Nordic players uh, like Molde going to Turkey and doing workshops there. But what Tarkan uh, just told us on the live stream is uh, super impressive. And uh, um, um, he's really, it is not only dedication, but I think the difference is doing sports in uh, Germany you, if you want to make money and be uh, um, uh, successful, you do soccer or tennis. But having new sports and uh, establish new sports is really difficult. But in Turkey, it looks like uh, he it just uh, the, the, the mixture uh, between family, business, and sports uh, is is really close. And uh, when when Tarkan tells me he needs his uh, young players first to do their uh, tests on a certain level and their homework and everything, then they are allowed to participate in the 
the training, this is a, a totally different approach because you mix the, the let's say, normal non-rugby life with the uh, rugby life and uh, this gives uh, him the opportunity to show that the underwater rugby family uh, has a positive influence on the, the kids so the, the parents are uh, uh, the parents um, have no problem with their kids in the uh, playing on the water rugby and don't see it as a, a disturbant disturbance to uh, 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 to their uh, school life. So uh, this is. Uh, I think I mean that's really interesting because uh, with our kids uh, in training we cannot do that. I think if we would say that we would not have any kids coming to training. <laughs> but we, 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 the dedication I think yes. you need uh, to put this and uh, the, the club members, the base of the club is paying for the pool time. He told us 5,000 euros a month uh, they have to pay for the pool and uh, plus uh, with the money uh, from the base um, he's paying his coaches, uh, he's paying his old expenses. So uh, um, this is a different structure. So let's go back uh, into the game Copenhagen against Nasut and uh, we're right here, uh, we see uh, fighting in the middle of the pool and uh, Nasut uh, is in possession of the ball and uh, Copenhagen is now on the left side, Nasut on the right, Nasut in white and Copenhagen in blue and Copenhagen is leading this game 1-0 against Nasut. So uh, I, I think both teams are uh, also on the same uh, level here um, but uh, with one uh, Leading point. Oh, we have only uh, 10 minutes uh, in, in this game. I thought it's also 15. Sorry about that. So 10 minutes left. Uh, this uh, is uh, uh, with l less uh, than 10 minutes. It's a good chance for uh, Copenhagen to keep the 1 0 score and uh, just uh, keep uh, Nasud out of the, the danger zone uh, around their basket and. Uh, um, for check them away, but now Nasud is going uh, uh, in the, the basket. Was a, a nice attack, but she lost uh, the the ball. Call from the referee, probably holding without ball. Yeah, holding without ball. Free throw against uh, Nasud. So uh, all the games right now we see are really on a high level, and uh, I have to um, I have to admit, um, it's. Uh, uh, it's interesting, we see today uh, the top teams uh, playing uh, the way they should. Um, nice uh, uh, open underwater rugby. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we just got a coffee brought for us. <laughs> it's so nice. Thank you. Uh, underwater rugby family, we care for each other. Thank you very much. Yes. Great, thanks. Gracias. Um, so, uh, yes, thanks uh, for appreciating our work here. I see Julian uh, from my team, he's doing uh, uh, the referee table. Thanks to him too. Yeah, so, I mean, thanks so much all the helpers are sitting there for hours doing the protocol uh, table. That's also hard work. So. All right, so we have Nasud willing to achieve a score that uh, trying to attack, but uh, Copenhagen is defending with everything. What well, that was a little bit of a kick, uh, but um, for blue players and just two white ones and uh, Copenhagen uh, almost didn't achieve to get the ball and uh, Nasut uh, recovered it and it's coming towards the basket and create a bit of a chaos but Copenhagen intercepted the ball and now swimming away uh, going towards uh, the finish basket. It's seven minutes, um, Nasut hasn't given up, they are uh, also doing a fine game and um, they need to stay a bit longer in the possession of the ball and then do some uh, um, wave and attack to force the defense of Copenhagen. Uh, like we saw before, there was a little bit of uh, chaos, but not enough pressure. I mean, uh, the Finnish uh, are very good defending and they have the one score that are going to stop Finland with everything they have. So. We have a question from uh, Ali, if you can uh, give him a little bit more of insight in the tactics. Um, uh, yes, we try to implement that uh, in our uh, uh, explaining what we see. Um, both teams are playing here classical style with uh, uh, defense and goalkeeper. Um, 
the tactics are uh, um, uh, the, the, the classical breakthrough uh, to the other side and uh, uh, build your attack uh, from the corner. Now we see Nasud uh, attacking. Um, and Pasi moving the ball uh, very fast in the middle fields, uh, uh, field to, uh, to get uh, to the um, Copenhagen uh, half of the, of the field. But uh, they uh, just got it. Uh, they're attacking over the close corner, so it's a bit of a safer place. And uh, the Copenhagen goalie just uh, left um, to recover the ball. Uh, we have two Finnish uh, players and... Uh, so the time is uh, ticking uh, um, for Nasud and Copenhagen uh, is totally aware of it. They, the time is working for uh, uh, their advantage. We have a free throw against Nasud and uh, um, Copenhagen can easily force uh, three throws uh, uh, against uh, Nasud if uh, they uh, are able, to, for example, to push out uh, Nasud players with the ball out of the playing field or have a, a cluster and uh, force them. Well, that was a great execution of the free throw. Sorry, did you yes, see that? They that passed it on nice. the surface, then down. They broke through the defense of Nasud. And you, you see it once if a team is uh, uh, experienced and uh, practicing the free throw, which I think is a, is a very... Uh, a good tool uh, to be fast uh, into the the what? basket area of the opponent. So now the goalie left. Uh, if you see, I mean, this is typical tactical uh, from uh, the Scandinavian. When you uh, are defending as a defender or as a goalie, before you drive up, you still go one swim against the uh, ball. Um, uh, the one that is in possession of the ball to break the attack that worked very well. That's one of the uh, tactical elements they are using. For uh, which you need a lot of uh, fitness. You need a lot of fitness for that, yes. It, it calls that a triangle. You are from the base, you swim towards the, 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 the field at where the attacker is, and then you go up to go down uh, again. That's so one integrated forechecking uh, in the integrated defense. Integrated forechecking in the defense, yeah. That's very typical from the Scandinavian system. That's, that makes such a big difference when you have teams doing this instead of just going up and down uh, that and that makes uh, really a difference as well for the team attacking because there's one more for checking that might make the difference be between the, uh, the goal or not we have a timeout uh, yeah, time uh, in this game here uh, the clock is uh, still t uh, uh, ticking uh, for uh, Copenhagen they only have to uh, work through these uh, last minutes uh, to win this game. They're already leading 1-0. Um, actually, what you just told us uh, about this triangle uh, defense uh, forechecking structure, you don't see that uh, very often because normally... No. It costs uh, a lot of strength, but yeah. if you do it uh, it's very consequent, effective. and this is something uh, the, the Norwegians do also great, um, this is what you see. I mean, the, for the for the one that don't know about tactical elements, you see that when you see that the one team is a lot underwater, because they swim a lot. They are not just going up and down. They do movements and, in, and then they defend. And then we saw that uh, in their current game. Um, so three minutes uh, thirty six left uh, in this uh, first game, and uh, in this uh, second half of the game, and. Uh, um, so we have four players of Nasud um, trying to get the ball away and <laughs> three of Copenhagen trying to recover. This is just playing middle field uh, for checking. Uh, they are very good, the Scandinavian girls are very, very good in going to the ball and not to the body of the one uh, being in possession of the ball, which make it really effective. You see that it takes one, uh, one stroke and then they have the ball in their hand. They're, they're very good in ripping the ball off their opponent, both teams. This is, this, these are two Scandinavian teams. I mean, uh, Finland against Copenhagen, they have very similar way of uh, playing. But uh, Copenhagen uh, is a little bit, a little bit more stronger. Yeah, uh, I guess they will know each other uh, as to all the Scandinavian teams. Um, they, they probably had tournaments with each other uh, they exchange players. So time is taking 2.20 uh, uh, yeah, for co Copenhagen. Um, fighting the surface. Also one other element that the Scandinavian uh, use a lot and also the Germans 
uh, is to um, do the counterattack with two or three along the uh, the bottom of the pool. Normally, if you were defending your basket and uh, you have the attackers, um, you know, doing four checking and recovering the ball, then it's the, the duty of the defender and the goalie. They were uh, at the moment uh, underwater if they, they haven't been for a long time to take the ball away and do the counter-attack or the fresh goalie coming in will do that. That's also another element that we see a lot in these games. We can point that out when we see it. <coughs> so uh, we hope, Ali, this gave you a little bit of insight in the tactics. Uh, let's go back in the game. We have one uh, minute 30 left. And uh, I think uh, Copenhagen is playing it clever, uh, not risking uh, catching a goal. Uh, and uh, keeping the ball moving, keeping the ball in their possession, and, and uh, the time is ticking. Now we have a counter attack from Copenhagen, and the, the defender of uh, Finland just took position. The goalie as well, the four checker recovered the ball, and as, as, as you see, I mean, the defender went a little bit uh, in order to get the ball, uh, but um, Copenhagen recovered. We have a free throw, uh, holding without ball uh, against Copenhagen. I love the four checking because the teams don't let uh, any uh, chance to the opponent to swim with a with a with a ball free. I mean, they always, I said, like uh, you know, um, hitting a wall. They are always there, and and um, they pass the ball quite fast, and they get to this cluster. But we see that they have such an effective way of recovering the ball because the cluster that were, uh, takes very very short time because they uh, they're so uh, they have such a skills that they can uh, go for the ball and rip it off the yes. the, the yes. arms of the opponent. That's that's how it should that be. It has to be, and it's difficult to do. It's not an easy thing to learn that timing. Uh, we have a timeout uh, from one of the teams, uh, probably uh, uh, Copenhagen, maybe Nasud. I don't know uh, who took the timeout, but uh, I think less than uh, or two minutes left uh, in this game. And uh, Nasud, um, no, less than a minute left. Time is ticking, uh, 40 seconds. Now Nasud uh, should throw in everything they have. Uh, yeah, they are now uh, almost all their players are down. This is the last attack of uh, Nasud against the basket of Copenhagen. That's their last chance. They have uh, less than a half a, a minute uh, to go for uh, the uh, Copenhagen basket. 80 seconds. This is uh, the last attack, and Copenhagen recover the ball. That's it. Um, Whatever now happens, the time is uh, almost over and Copenhagen is uh, leading uh, with 1-0, so 3-2-1-0. That's it, Copenhagen did win this uh, match against that Nasud. And they did play it uh, clever after they... Yeah, uh, but you know, they still, I mean, Nasud had won against Barcelona and now uh, Copenhagen won against Nasud and we have just the third... Um, game should be let's see what did I miss sorry continue I'll ah, uh, did I say something uh -huh. um, well uh, what will be the next game uh, um, here it should be a man game it should be uh, Czech uh, Budejovice uh, Czech Budejovice in Malmö Triton so the, the Czech Republic against play. Sweden seven and eight plays uh, Malmö will not be uh, this uh, satisfied with uh, their placing in this tournament and uh, uh, they had uh, strong opponents and a little bit of bad luck um, and uh, for uh, the Czech team uh, they did fight well, fight well, don't know that much about them which is a pity, um, try to uh, I invest more time in finding out how uh, teams yep. are playing differently.